Welcome to the next episode of Two Derby Nuts, brought to you by Stock Car Derby. And in this episode, we're going to, let's start over, because I want to, let's say your names. Okay. Welcome to the next episode of Two Derby Nuts. I'm Scott Heima. And I'm Jason Maybray. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about adding to the car, uh, whether it be pieces of wood to make it wider, taller, or other accoutrements, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, this episode again is brought to you by Stock Car Derby. And again, get creative, get your stock car kit. And we've got a national design contest going on right now. And you can submit your photos. Contest runs through April 30th. So Jason, uh, in, the, in a previous episode, you talked about adding that piece of wood to the side of the car. But explain a little bit more of how you make a car wider or taller. And I, I can go into some of the ones that I've got being tall. So Sure. Um, yeah, so before, if you want to make it wider, just get uh, you know, it's about a quarter inch thick piece of wood and uh, you know, cut it to the shape you want. And uh, take, just get some wood glue. Uh, I don't know if you've ever used wood glue before, but it is incredibly strong. Um, and you need some kind of clamp, like clamp. you can't just hold it in place. It, it needs to be in place for, you know, I would leave the clamps on for probably an hour and then let it sit uh, overnight, you know, come back to it another day. That's part of what takes so long sometimes is you can only do one step and, you know, you do a 15 minute step and then you got to wait a day before you can touch it again or else it'll all fall back apart. Um, so, yeah, something like this works real nice for, uh, for making it wider. Um, there are some, like as you can tell, where's, here's our blank kit. Here's how tall the blank kit is. Um, obviously, uh, Lightning McQueen is taller than that. Um, so I had to take a block of wood and, and make the roof. Uh, and I found it's typically easier to um, shape the roof before you glue it on. Like some of them I, I just glued like a rectangular block of wood on there and then tried to, to carve it all down. A lot of times, at least roughen out the shape to where you want it um, before you glue it on the car. Uh, can be save you a whole lot of time later. Yeah, can uh, I see the block? Yes. Right. So as Jason point, you can see how thick it is. Well, what I did when I made this camper is I actually bought two kits. So I had two blocks and I glued one on top of the other and I, I shaped it all out, made it look like a camper and then I put it on the scale. <laughs> <laughs> I had to start all over. I had to cut the top off. So I went to, I went to um, my near, uh, the nearest hobby shop, or you probably can find this at uh, like Lowe's or Home Depot, a uh, balsa wood. It is very, very light. And so balsa wood doesn't come uh, as thick as uh, the block. So what you'll, ha what you'll have to do is layer it. And so what I would do is I would, this one probably has, I, I sanded it, I can't see it now, probably three or four layers of balsa wood on top. I had to do the same thing with the bus and the fire engine. And what I would do, is, uh, as Jason had mentioned, I'd, I'd cut one out and cut it a little bit wider than, than the block. Put it on, put another layer of glue, another layer of balsa, and then clamp it all. Make sure you don't clamp it too tight because if you don't know much about balsa wood, your fingernail condent it. Uh, that's how that's how light and thin it is. So that's a way that you can really um, build the the profile of your car up without adding a whole lot of weight. But then you're going to have to <laughs> most likely drill a lot because you still may be uh, overweight. Show the bottom of the mystery machine. Yeah. So this is actually um, you can see. I mean, the, the camper. Where's our blank? So here, here's our blank. And so you can see Scott's camper is considerably taller than, than, than the blank piece of wood. So you had to add quite a bit. Same with the, the bus. Um, but if you look at the mystery machine here, it even dwarfs the camper. I mean, it's like a whole nother block higher. Um, so this was a, a huge challenge to uh, try and make something this big and bulky looking still be five ounces. Yeah, but and remember too, you were we were talking about before, rem make sure, I don't know if there's rules that we state about how tall the car can be, but it definitely needs to fit uh, under the finish line. Yeah, and, and our, with our track, this one kind of just clears it. Um, so yeah, I, I learned the hard way with making one of my son's cars that, uh, you know, measure 
you know, me measure the track ahead of time. Um, you know, stockade leaders, it's probably a good idea to maybe let your kids know ahead of time what, what the height of the finish line is. Um, you know, a lot of them, they, you know, it's a crossbar. It's got to fit under. We have a good friend, Jim, who made this beautiful <laughs> sailboat. He's got a sailboat in real life, uh, sails out on Lake Ontario. Well, he, uh, he came with this beautiful derby car of a sailboat. We had to cut his mast off. <laughs> it wouldn't fit under. Yeah. I, I ran the same problem with my, uh, my youngest son one year, wanted to make a forklift. And the, the mast of the forklift was, was taller than, than the finish line. We had to kind of nip about a half inch or so off of it. Um, but something like this, you're not nipping a half inch off of. You're starting over if, if it's too big. So make sure you know the dimensions of your track and make sure that, that it'll fit it. Um, this is about the max of what will fit underneath our, our particular finish line of, of the brand track that we have. Um, so, yeah, this one I knew weight-wise was going to be a huge problem. So before I even got started, I, I took this block and, and I cut it pretty much in half. Um, so this is about an inch thick. I cut it down to, to a little, little over half, about five-eighths of an inch thick. Um, just put it right on the saw and, and sliced it right down the middle. And then um, you can see I, I took and put a bunch of holes in the bottom of it. Um, not only are there holes in the bottom of it, but I actually went and drilled holes through the side of it as well. This, you know, what was this original block is like a piece of Swiss cheese. Just, you know, just enough wood left to it to hold, hold the sides. So rather than layering a bunch of things up this way, uh, I actually basically built a box. So I, I had some thin panels of wood um, that I cut the profile of the sides and um, glued those on. So not only did I widen it, but I also made it taller at the same point. And so the sides are only like about a quarter of an inch thick all the way up. And then you know, I had it cut to the profile. So then I had some, some thin panels of balsa wood that I just glued in sections going, going around the, the framework that I'd created. So yeah, if, I don't know if you, how well you can see it in the camera, but it is basically just a, a hollow box. And uh, I still couldn't make weight. So where my, my windows are, I actually cut the windows out and, and then, you know, found, oops, I'm popping that one out, uh, found, found some pictures and, and, poke too hard. and, and glued them on the inside to, uh, to fill in the, the hole that I cut out. So, uh, you know, this part is still solid, but the side windows I actually had to remove um, to, to shave off another tenth of an ounce or whatever so it was. So he basically to try to make built a box. The whole thing is, yeah. is, is, it, is, it is hollow. hollow. And, and the funny thing is, you know, when, when you grab something small, like say your, your cream sickle, you know, and, and, and this, like they both weigh five ounces, but when you pick them up, like your brain's thinking this is going to be so much heavier. So this feels like a feather yeah. and, and that feels like, like a brick. It's a little bit more solid. You know, even though they're the exact same weight, just somehow psychologically, it, to me, it, it always feels like this, this weighs nothing. When, uh, when I wanted to make a Coke can, uh, I, actually totally scrapped the idea of using the block and uh, where I got the idea was was at a hobby shop and I actually found these little wooden canisters they were uh, a canister you like could fit things into it it had a top and a bottom and so you can't see it uh, on, on the camera I don't know if you can see well enough you can see a little bit of ridges uh, in this and there's actually three of them and what I did is I took these little canisters glued them all together and and clamped it and so it's not even the block at all so what I had to do is I had to take a piece of round dowel uh, and I, I, I used the official wheels and axles and it's the official dimensions of the the block and because in, in well at least in this area we do not allow you to expand the axle dimension width. So I actually used some wooden canisters to, to make this. And what I did is when I decided to make the, the steam train engine, the, this is actually a PVC pipe. And I, I took the pipe, I took the bottom of the uh, block, just like Jason did with the mystery machine. I cut it very uh, almost in half and then I found some thin pieces of wood like he did, and I made the box for the cab. And as I was making the, the um, I shaped out the cow, the cow catcher, and then I needed the, to cap the end of the PVC pipe, and I didn't know what to, to do, and I'm looking around, and Jason will explain some of the things that he has found. 
the wheel, <laughs> another extra wheel fit perfectly. So that's actually a wheel on the front to close off the PVC pipe. And so I was able to utilize a lot of different parts to add to it, to make it look like it, not just all wood. Yeah, now these, these top pieces, those were preformed pieces of wood that you, you bought? Or? I did, I found, those, I found those again at a hobby shop where uh, I, they weren't like, oh, th these are the tops of a train. But uh, as I walk down the aisles, I, lo I look for things and sometimes it gives me an idea when I'm looking at a hobby shop, uh, especially in the wood section, they've got so many different things that are cut out, you know, circles and letters and a lot of different shapes. And this didn't, you know, say, oh, this is you use for a, a, a train smokestack. Uh, but I thought it looked really perfect for a train smokestack. And then I, uh, I just, I drilled holes in the side of the PVC pipe for the, the, uh, the wire. I think that this is uh, handrails for the, the engineers to, to walk along the, the side of the engine. Yeah, and I know it's on, on several years, I know it's a very popular thing to do. Um, Lego blocks. Yes. Um, you know, they, they, they're they a, a nice scale for, for a lot of things. The back um, of that, the propeller yeah. is actually a, a, a Lego. And I, now, to me, I'm, I'm a Lego nut, so I would never sacrifice my Legos for my car. <laughs> well, I uh, took these from my son. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Garrett. But uh, yeah, on my Zamboni, I found, I found a piece. It really wasn't a chair, but I found a piece. There's a steering wheel and a chair uh, for the back of the Zamboni. That's uh, Actually, that is that's a, chair. a Lego. Oh, is it? Yeah. No, I need my glasses on. <laughs> now, um, so going back to the, the 427 Cobra here, um, like I said, this is a disease. I, I'm a nut. Um, you know, this has a, a windshield and a roll cage and a steering wheel and, and the side pipes, you know, for the exhaust and, and seats and everything. Uh, you can buy, uh, you know, they make kits where you can buy like side pipes and roll bars and stuff. I didn't do that. Um, everything on this I, I fabricated from scratch um, just because I'm a nut. It's a disease. Uh, so, and like these aren't, like I said, none of this stuff was, was things made for, um, for one, of, one of these stock car kits. It, it was all things I fabricated. And uh, I know Scott said he likes to go through the hobby shop. I just like to rummage through like my garage and, and the junk drawer and my wife's craft supplies and see what kind of stuff I just have laying around the house to make things out of. So um, what I used um, for this and, and for this car as well, you know, see this one has a, a, a roll bar behind it and uh, it's got some side pipes to it or, or some, some back pipes coming out the back of it. Um, I found this, this is actually for securing a chain link fence. <laughs> and I, I, I had had to purchase a, a new length of, part of my chain link fence had, had been all mangled and destroyed. I had to get a new piece. And so these are what you, you hook it into one side and then bend it around the pipe and hook it to the other side. So they're made out of aluminum. So they're very soft, very flexible, easy to shape. Um, they're, they're already a, a bare metal color and uh, you know, they're really cheap and you know, they're so soft. You can use a regular pair of diagonal cutters like you'd use for uh, you know, cutting electrical wire and, and you know, it just snaps off real easy, uh, real easy to shape, real easy to work with. And, and you, know, you can make all kinds of cool stuff. So if you can't find, uh, something in a hobby shop to, to be what you want it to be. If you need to custom create things, that's a great way to do it. Just go right to the hardware store and, and buy a package of those. They're not real expensive. Um, the steering wheel on this car is, is actually a roofing nail um, that I took a, a little rubber O-ring and glued to the end of it and uh, just kind of colored the middle of it in with a Sharpie marker and, and drilled a hole and slid the, slid the nail in there for the steering wheel. The, uh, the seats are actually made out of plaster. Um, like Scott said, I work with clay at work, so I just took a scrap piece of clay and, and poked, poked a, an indentation into it uh, in the shape of a seat and filled it full of plaster. And then after the plaster set, I, I peeled the clay back and, and shaped them. And uh, it's yeah. a disease. Yeah. I, 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 there are, if, yeah. You go, if you go to certain hobby shops that have a derby section, you can actually buy uh, cars already cut out. And then you can also buy kits to add things to it that's fine go ahead you know but there jason's a little bit more of the disease side than i am as far <laughs> as you know being a little bit more authentic i'll use legos as i said i you know use uh pvc pipe and and other stuff 
or various parts of it. Uh, but I, I want to try to at least create what I'm trying to do from various pieces and not just buy it where I have to glue two things together and then now it looks great. So like when this was what I did last year, I, I made a piano and I, I was running out of time again and I was just going to paint the keys on. They're like, no, I, I want it. I want the, the, the black keys to be uh, 3D. So I went, I went and bought some uh, very thin rod balsa that uh, fit dimensionally as, as the key. The hardest part was getting them all the same size. Uh, I had to, had to cut, you know, there's probably uh, 20 of them on here and then gluing them on straight. That was, that was difficult. So I, I wanted to make it 3D. I could have gotten a sticker. I could have painted it, but you know, going that little extra just might mean the difference. Now, granted, you don't do this for the prizes, but of course, as guys, we all love competition. Um, you know, I don't know how many years in a row it was either just Jason or I won first place for design. It was a lot of years in a row. And so we, and many times, uh, he, he would share what he's working on. And I used to like to keep it a secret. A lot of the boys in our stockade and battalion and stuff, Mr. Hyman, what are you working on this year? And they're like, oh, I'll let you know on the derby day. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. If you're interested in winning, this is your car. When did you have time to make these? Oh, I, yeah, I, I had them drawn up uh, the minute I found out we were having a boy. Yeah, I've been saving him for Brady's first derby. It, it's, hmm, what do you think? Uh, it's, it's cool, Dad, but I'd really rather make this one. Okay. Come on. No, 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 I, it's okay. I can see that I am not needed for this. Sit down, Dad. No, no, that's okay. Go ahead and uh, build that car. But when you win the most cautious driver award, don't come crying to me. Uh, we, we have some fun with it. Again, we're two derby nuts, and this episode has been brought to you by Stock Car Derby. Get your stock car kit. Hopefully, we've given you a lot of ideas of what you can do with your creativity and enter our national design contest. We've got some future episodes on speed, on how to run a derby, planning a derby, as well as some teachable moments. I'm Scott Heima. And I'm Jason Maybrink. Two derby nuts. <laughs>